uh, you probably hear the obstetricians, okay, they will discuss with you, okay, do you want to do the OSCAR? Do you want to do the NIPT? And uh, hopefully we just shed a bit of light for what all these various things uh, actually are. Now, uh, so I'm trying to move this little icon. Um, okay, so first trimester screening, FTS, also known as uh, OSCAR, which is the one-stop clinic for assessment, okay? Uh, back fine, there's no off risk. See, Oscar just uh, as uh, yeah, I mean off risk uh, one stop clinic assessment, okay, off risk, which can begin as early as 11, 11 weeks. Okay, we do this between 11 weeks to 13 weeks and six days. Okay, it usually involves blood tests and an ultrasound. It uh, looks at our baby's overall development and check if the baby's at risk for genetic conditions, example, Down syndrome, it was also for trisomy, uh, Edward and Patau as well. Okay, it checks for your baby's nuchal translucency thickness, which refers to the neck skin thickness of the baby and structural abnormalities. Now, uh, let's go on to the next. Slide. Okay, so what, what do we mean by this nuclear translucency? You see this uh, neck skin thickness, which is here. Now, Oscar was, uh, has been here for quite a while. The sensitivity that we quote to pick up Down syndrome is about 90%, 90 to 95%, depending on which institution you look at. Which means that out of 100 Down syndrome pregnancies, every single one is a Down syndrome. If you were to do this, you, you were to do this test, you pick up 90 to 95 of them. You will miss 5 to 10 of them. You miss five to 10 of them means that you do this test, we tell you it's low risk, but it's actually a Down syndrome baby. Now for quite a period of time, that was the only available test okay, for uh, mothers who like to screen for Down syndrome for, or for any other genetic conditions. Until NIPT, non-invasive prenatal testing, Harmony, Panorama, okay, uh, what have you, came along. Uh, we will go a little bit about this FTS first, okay, be sure to see. So now, um, so one, the sensitivity of, down, of, uh, um, of this, first trimester screening in the OSCAR, it would not be as good as compared to the NIPT, the non-invasive prenatal testing, when it comes to Down syndrome. And just hold that thought in mind. We are only talking about Down syndrome. Yeah? So NIPT, okay, uh, I'll just jump a few slides. Okay, I'll talk about NIPT later. NIPT, it identifies more than 99% of trisomy 21 of Down syndrome babies. Okay? Now let's go back to the previous slide. Now it's important to know this, okay? Yes. For first trimester screening, the performance in terms of Down syndrome, okay, let me emphasize just Down syndrome, uh, uh, F, the F, FTS or the OSCAR is 90-95%, whereas NIPT is more than 99%. Okay, NIPT will win uh, OSCAR or FTS hands down, okay? But it is only that, okay, now the additional uh, advantages of an FTS or an OSCAR is that you measure the nuclear translucency. The nuclear translucency refers to the next skin thickness. And from here, it's a window to discuss about further possibility and other issues. If the nuclear translucency is thick, the baby is at a higher risk of heart abnormalities, heart structural abnormalities. It is a risk of other, structural, uh, uh, other abnormal structural abnormalities in the rest of the baby. It is an increased risk of genetic syndromes. It is an increased risk of uh, chromosomal abnormalities. Uh, it is at increased risk of miscarriages. It is at increased risk of, uh, uh, yep. So there, there, there are a whole slew of things that would uh, come along with this increased neck skin thickness. And if the NT, the nuclear translucency, the neck skin thickness is above a certain value, we discuss about a chromosomal microarray, which is a more genetic, a more uh, detailed genetic analysis into the genetic makeup of the baby, which we wouldn't have discussed. Let's say if you just opted for NIPT. Okay, I mean, you're told, oh, for Down syndrome, it's more 99%. Yes, it is perfect very good and very expensive somehow. So you just do NIPT and you skip the Oscar and you don't do the nuclear translucency. You would then miss an opportunity to screen the baby for other uh, genetic issues as well as structural abnormalities. And if the NT is like we discussed about microarray, which is a more genetic detailed analysis, and uh, you discover a lot more things than uh, in the, uh, that may uh, go wrong in the genetic uh, makeup of the baby. So you must understand that Down syndrome is not the only thing that can happen to the baby. That is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many, 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 many genetic conditions that can happen to the baby. Right? Pre, Lusha, Prada, Willy, Nunan syndrome. So, so many issues, right? But unfortunately, it's, uh, I think it's just also part of marketing. It's also the cost, okay? Uh, and it's, it's the way that uh, you understand the various tests as well. I think you need to really appreciate what are the differences? What are the strengths? What are the pros and cons for the various tests before you make the decision? Now, uh, in addition, the other things about the OSCAR which you do is that we look for other structural abnormalities. Let's say, uh, okay, so if you do the OSCAR, okay, we can actually detect 
uh, acrania where there's no skull bone in the baby. Okay, uh, polar process cephaly when there's abnormal brain in the baby. Or uh, gastroscysis or fallacy, the intestines is actually outside the abdomen of the baby. Now, all these things can be picked up on OSCAR, which NIPT will be negative. Okay, so NIPT can be low risk or normal, and the baby can have no skull bone, abnormal brain. The intestines can be outside the abdomen of the baby. And all this, you, know, you wouldn't know if you're not done an, an OSCAR or an FPS. Now, uh, there was this patient I encountered. Okay, uh, so she, uh, she came and then she had uh, no skull bone. And then the patient uh, asked me, Doctor, I did the, the best test. It was a $1,000 over test. And I was told low risk. How come my, my baby has no skull bone? How come you know, this can happen to my baby? So you must understand, okay, if you do do an NIPT, you are looking for Down syndrome, okay, 1813, which is uh, Edward syndrome, Patau syndrome, uh, sex chromosome issue, depending on which uh, NIPT that you engage, and DeJoch syndrome. Just five conditions, five, four or five conditions, depending on what it is, and you may, okay, the baby may have other issues. And if you absolutely understand what you're in for, I think that's fine. I think every parent, hopefully, we can just give you the information so that you can appreciate okay, what each of the tests actually look for, and then you 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 that you actually make a make a decision. So um, yeah, okay. I, I think uh, okay. Other things which I want to bring up about uh, Oscar or the FTS is that it is time sensitive. It can be done only between eleven weeks to thirteen weeks and six days. And uh, and uh, yeah, I think we'll just hold this thought there. Okay. Let's go on. Okay, uh, now, the other thing we just have to bring up is this biochemical serum screening, which is known as the triple test, the quad test. Uh, we, where we do, okay, all these are jargons to you, okay, but uh, the, these are the things that we actually look for in the triple test, okay, which is the pregnancy, okay, so the PEP-A, which is the pregnancy-associated plasma protein A, the beta HCG, as well as the AFP, the alpha keto protein. When you combine these three together, it can also help to screen for Down syndrome, but unfortunately, the performance of this test is not very good. Sensitivity is about 60%. Which means you miss, miss about 40% of the Down syndrome babies. You could miss up to 40% of the Down syndrome babies. So not that great, but this is an option. Yeah, this is something which we, we bring up to patients. Now, NIPT, what's non-invasive prenatal testing? Now, non-invasive prenatal, uh, prenatal testing is a screen test that analyzes the cell-free DNA circulating the pregnant mother's blood. Okay? Uh, we are looking for Down syndrome, trisomy 21, 18, which is Edward syndrome, 13, which is Patau syndrome. Now, what, what we actually, what the technology, what, what is this NIPT? Essentially, we're actually drawing blood from the mother. We can isolate the DNA and differentiate it from the mother's DNA. And this DNA is actually from the placenta of the pregnancy. So the, plus, the, the cell from the placenta, the placenta is actually the unit that gives uh, nutrition to the baby. Now, this, the placental cells will die and the DNA will then go into the mother's bloodstream. And what we can do when we draw blood, okay, now technology is available where we can differentiate the mother's and the fetus's DNA. And then from there, we can look into the risk of Down syndrome. Now, this is very good. Okay, in terms of trusting to you, I, I haven't seen a screening test. Okay, maybe there's some screening test out there that's okay, never say never. Okay, this is amazing. More than 99% is almost 100%. Now, this is where the confusion comes in, sometimes with the mothers. Wow, I have a test that can detect more than 99% of the fetuses with trisomy 21. This just means that you have 100 Down syndrome pregnancies. Every single one is a Down syndrome. If you were to do this test, it picks up almost all of them. Be careful. Okay, yes, if you get a low risk, it's unlikely to have Down syndrome, but it's not perfect. Theoretically, it can still miss a Down syndrome, but if you get the low risk, it's unlikely that this baby is a Down syndrome. So, uh, and the other caveat is this. If you have a high-risk NIPT, does that mean that my, my baby is affected by Down syndrome? That's a different meaning altogether. So sometimes, okay, if you get a high-risk NIPT and then the mother gets really anxious and then, oh no, my baby is affected by Down syndrome, oh, you know, the cannot sleep, cannot eat. Okay, that's a different meaning altogether. Okay, I, I, you need to be able to interpret the meaning of a high-risk NIPT result. A high-risk NIPT result doesn't mean that it's an affected fetus or pregnancy. The baby can still be normal, okay? The positive predictive value, okay? So, I mean, okay, uh, let, let's not go into jargons. Okay? It's very important to highlight that a high-risk NIPT result for trisomy 31 doesn't mean that the baby is affected and the baby can still be normal. You still need to go for a diagnostic test. You need to put a needle in, okay, uh, either from aneurysm or a CVS or coronary beta sampling, and you need to, uh, to confirm that the baby has, whether the baby has or has not uh, 
Down syndrome. Okay, the baby can still be normal. It's very important. This is an important fact. Do not make a decision based on a high risk NIPT. Now, the pros and cons of CVS and amniose disease, I think we have no time to go into this okay, uh, in this uh, short lecture this afternoon. But uh, this is something that you need to discuss okay, with the, the obstetrician to understand uh, uh, the pros and cons okay, of these two procedures. So I think at this point, okay. Oscar NIPT, a lot of people, oh, Oscar NIPT, Oscar NIPT, okay? Oscar, oh, it's about $350. NIPT is about $980. Wow, you know, 99%, more than, more than 99%. And then it's uh, so expensive, it must be the better test. No, I think it's very careful, be very careful, understand what each of these tests are looking for, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses. And I think at the end of the day, ask yourself this question. Is your question, uh, doctor, uh, I mean, is your question, I want to know whether my baby is affected by Down syndrome. If that is your question, NIPT wins hands down. Nothing can be an NIPT in terms of screening for Down syndrome. Or is your question, doctor, do I want to know what is wrong with my baby? I want to know whatever that can be abnormal in my baby. Doctor, I just want to know all the, abnorm I mean, all the possible abnormalities or as much as you can tell me about my baby. Then you may have to consider an Oscar or an FTS. The caveat to that is that the sensitivity for an Oscar is only about 90, 95%, which means that you miss Down syndrome of five to 10%. And if that is too high for you, then you may have to consider whether to do both because you have to combine both. If you cannot take the five to 10% of missing Down syndrome, then you may have to consider doing an NIPT to make up for that. 